Sophos Central is a cloud-based platform that allows you to manage all of your security in one place. Not only that, but you can visit the Sophos Central console on the go. All you need is access to a web browser. The dashboard offers automatically prioritised alerts and a summary showing the protection status or recent activity for end users, computers, mobile devices and servers, as well as detailed or summarised reporting tools. To add an additional layer of security to access in the Sophos Central console, you can optionally set up multi-factor authentication for administrators. Simply go into the global settings and select multi-factor authentication. And from here, you can choose whether to turn it on or off for all admins, or whether you would like to use it for certain admins. After turning MFA on and logging back in, the user will be prompted to set up a secondary method of authentication. As you can see here, an email with a security code will be received, which can be used to create a PIN. The Google Authenticator app can then be used to scan the QR code and set up the use of time-based tokens as another method. Going forward, when the user logs in, they will have the option to use a security code and PIN, or the Google Authenticator token as a secondary authentication method alongside their password. Within Sophos Central, users can be created in one of three ways. They can either be created manually, synchronised from Active Directory, or automatically when the endpoint agent is deployed to a device. Each user can be assigned to one or more groups, and each user or user group can be assigned to a security policy. Policies can also be applied to specific computers or computer groups, if you would like the policy to take effect regardless of the user that is logged in. Similarly to creating users, there are three methods you can use to deploy endpoint protection to computers or servers. From the Protect Devices page, you have the option to download specific components or the whole Windows package. And to save time, you can email a setup link to users directly for them to install the endpoint protection, providing they are an administrator. For bulk deployments, you can use Active Directory scripts or System Center Configuration Manager to distribute and automatically install the protection. The Threat Protection Policy of Endpoint Advance combines with Intercept X to significantly advance overall endpoint and server security. With Endpoint Advance, the Threat Protection Policy has features such as anti-malware file scanning, live protection and the host intrusion prevention system, all of which contribute to detecting and blocking malware before it runs on a device. In addition to this, Endpoint Advanced offers malicious traffic detection, which will detect any running threats and once identified, it has the ability to automatically remove malware. Moving on to Intercept X, the features of this can be seen here within the threat protection policy. The latest release of Intercept X comes with advanced malware detection which is powered by deep learning neural networks. This new innovative form of machine learning is fully scalable, can process millions of malware samples and make more accurate decisions at a higher speed. As a result of this, there are far less false positives when you compare it to a traditional machine learning model. Through research, Sophos have been able to identify that out of the millions of unique malware samples, they only use 24 common exploit techniques. InterceptX is able to provide advanced signatureless exploit prevention by concentrating on these techniques, and as a result, is effective at protecting against zero-day exploits and can detect malware in approximately 20 milliseconds. One of the most important features of Intercept X is CryptoGuard, which protects against ransomware attacks. CryptoGuard takes a snapshot of files as soon as it detects any malicious file encryption behaviour. Once it has isolated the malicious process, it automatically rolls back any affected files to their original state. Not only can it detect file ransomware, but it can also effectively prevent disk and boot ransomware. I will now simulate a ransomware attack to demonstrate how Intercept X detects, prevents and cleans up the malicious process.
As you can see there, the ransomware has been detected by Intercept Dex, and the Sophos Clean feature has began removing the malware from the device. If we take a look at the files, we can see they have been restored to their original state, and the encrypted files have had no negative effect. As previously mentioned, another useful feature of Intercept X is the wipe guard disk and boot protection. This prevents malicious tampering with system areas of the disk and has been proven effective against well-known attacks. As you can see here, when I try to wipe the master boot record of this PC, Intercept X will automatically block the attack instantly. Root Cause Analysis is a tool which allows you to analyse the events related to an infection and can help you to identify areas where security can be improved. When Sophos Central detects malware, it will create a root cause analysis case here to allow for further investigation. As you can see, the ransomware attack from earlier has created a high priority case. Within there, you can see some useful information such as the root cause, data involved, where it occurred and when the malware was detected. Under the artifacts tab, you can view the business files that were targeted in the attack and the actions taken. As you can see here, the test underscore zero zero file was first read and then the ransomware attempted to encrypt the file. The visualized tab provides a complete overview of the attack from start to finish. For example, in this case, we can see that the beacon or the process that was detected carrying out malicious behaviour was Adobe Acrobat Reader, and the root cause of the attack was a service host process. We can also see that Acrobat Reader attempted to write 13 files. Going into the peripheral control policy, this gives you the ability to protect data by restricting access to devices on endpoints such as USB sticks and external hard disks. You can either disable peripheral control altogether, monitor devices, or control whether you block and allow certain devices. You also have the option to ensure that storage media is read-only. Any detected peripherals will be automatically recorded and can then be used in the exemptions section to determine how a specific device is controlled. In this example, I am going to block all USB sticks, but if I wanted to allow a particular device, I could go into Add Exemptions, tick the device, and set the policy to Allow. The exemption can either be enforced by the model or by the ID of a specific device. Now that I'm happy with the policy, we're going to save it down and connect to USB stick to test whether it gets automatically blocked. And as you can see there, this device has hit the base policy and as a result has been blocked. Moving on to application control, I'm going to go in and take a look at the base policy. This can be used to monitor and manage the applications that all users have access to. You can build and tailor a list of applications that you want to control and choose whether to allow or block the applications for each user or computer based policy. Allowing controlled applications is useful when you first start implementing application control as it gives you the ability to see what is being used. You can do some further research into this using scheduled and on-demand scans which will help you to understand what impact blocking a certain application will have. When defining the control list, you have the option to choose individual applications or select an entire category. For example, to boost productivity, you might decide to block all gaming apps. And to save time, there is an option available to block any new applications that are added to a category in the future. There are many applications available to choose from, however, if there are any applications missing that you would like to control, you, you can request to have them added by Sophos using this link. 
One of the main benefits of application control is that it allows you to prevent endpoints from running any outdated vulnerable software. For example, previous versions of web browser applications could be vulnerable to new exploits and may pose a significant security threat. With application control, you could disable anything that is not up to date and secure. In this particular policy, I've decided to block remote desktop connections, so I'm just going to demonstrate that taking effect. Data loss prevention, or DLP, protects against the accidental disclosure of sensitive information by monitoring and restricting the transfer of files. It can give you some much needed control over where confidential data is being stored and where it is being sent to. Within the policy, you have the option to create either a file or content rule. Content rules allow you to control files that contain certain information for example, you might decide to block the transfer of any files flagged as containing bank account details, or alternatively, a file that contains a certain keyword or phrase. File rules allow you to control files that meet certain conditions, such as the file type or file name. For each rule, you can select whether you want to allow the transfer, ask the user to confirm, or block the transfer completely. No matter what the rule type is, a destination always needs to be specified. There are several options to choose from for the destination, such as email clients, internet browser, or removable storage devices. When you save a rule, it is stored in data loss prevention rules under the settings. This saves a lot of time as it allows rules to be used across multiple policies. I've already created a content rule here under the base policy. If a user now tries to copy a file that contains the phrase top secret to a USB stick, they will be prompted and asked to confirm the transfer. The web control policy is focused on providing the administrator with control over web browsing. This policy complements the web protection that can be found under threat protection that we looked at earlier. The policy is broken up into a number of different sections, and for each section you can choose to specify how everything is dealt with. For example, you can either manually specify, or you can use the pre-configured Sophos recommended settings. In this example, I have decided to block the downloading of executable files. The acceptable web usage section controls how websites with different categories are handled. For example, you can see here that websites categorised as gambling will warn the user before they can access it. I will now simulate visiting a website categorised as gambling. There are also some data loss related options to control whether downloads are allowed altogether and whether webmail is allowed or blocked. The website tagging is a really useful feature that can allow you to change the default behaviour of web control for specific websites. When a tag is applied to a website you can select an action to be applied such as allow or block as well as the category in which you want to override. In this example, websites categorised as sports are currently set to warn users before they can access them. However, I wanted to specifically block a particular website, so I have tagged ESPN so I can override the sports category and block this. As you can see, any other sports websites will continue to follow the policy and will warn users about accessing the site. Server protection is available for both Windows and Linux servers, as well as virtual environments and servers hosted by Amazon Web Services. 
Server protection is deployed in the same way that you would deploy endpoint protection to a computer and once it is installed the server will appear under the server's screen. Here you can see some useful information about the server such as the name, operating system and IP address. Server policies are also configured in the same way as devices, however server policies are applied to servers or server groups and the policy will always take effect no matter which user is logged in. The benefit of this is that the server will always be protected with the policies that you have defined and you don't need to worry about tailoring server policies to specific users. There are very little differences between the server and endpoint policies, however some policies have been modified where appropriate for server use. For example, the wipe guard and root cause analysis features of IntercepteX are not available in server protection, although features like CryptoGuard are still available to be used with the advanced server protection license. Server protection does have a unique lockdown feature that allows you to restrict the applications that are allowed to run on each server. Before the server is locked down, it creates a list of known applications and after it is enabled, the existing applications will be trusted. Any new applications going forward will be automatically blocked unless an exception is specified in the lockdown policy. This is useful because you can keep the server in lockdown while installing any necessary additional software. As you can see, this particular Windows 2012 server is currently in lockdown I'm now going to attempt to install a new web browser. As you can see, the install has been blocked by the server protection lockdown policy. Tamper protection prevents users from modifying their endpoint protection settings or from uninstalling the software altogether. With tamper protection enabled, the majority of the endpoint agent is read-only until the user authenticates themselves with the tamper protection password. This can be viewed and generated under the device or server detail pages and is unique to each device. If you do not need to use tamper protection, then it can be disabled on individual devices. Sophos Central also provides a platform for you to manage your disk encryption and acts as a first line of defense to protect data if any devices get lost or stolen. You can manage Microsoft BitLocker for Windows devices and FileVault for Macs. Encryption is deployed as a separate component from Endpoint Advanced and can be downloaded and installed in a similar fashion from the Protect Devices screen. To configure device encryption, you simply need to turn on the user or computer-based policy. Additionally, for Windows devices, you can choose whether to enforce startup authentication, which will prompt the user for a PIN, passphrase or USB key. The encrypt use space only option is a quick method to use for encrypting machines as it will not encrypt the entire disk. However, it is recommended to only use this on new devices as some data may not be visible at the time and will remain unencrypted on used disks. Once you have deployed an encryption policy to a device, you will be prompted with this box and asked to enter a BitLocker password before the computer is restarted. After the restart, you will then be prompted to enter the password you have just set for BitLocker in order to unlock the drive. And once you are logged in, you will see BitLocker begin encrypting the disk in the background. Mobile control is another very useful feature in Sophos Central that can be used side by side with encryption, endpoint and server protection. 
The mobile dashboard is comprised of a series of customizable widgets, which provide key information as well as a device enrollment wizard to help you get started in minutes. Support is available for previous and current versions of Apple, Android and Windows devices, with continued support for any new devices. Enrollment for Sophos Mobile Control is quick and simple. The process can either be initiated by an administrator in Central, or by the user via the self-service portal. In this example, I am going to enrol a new iOS device using the Device Enrollment Wizard. Devices can also be enrolled or manually created from the Manage Devices page. As you can see, I firstly need to search for and select a user and then enter some details about the device, such as the platform, name and whether it is a corporate or personal phone. You then have the option to just enrol the device or to use a specific task bundle. Task bundles, which are supported on Android and iOS devices, are a collection of apps, profiles and actions that will be applied to the device. For example, you could use a task bundle to apply certain restrictions and install any desired applications on a newly enrolled device. In this case, I have enrolled the iPhone manually and sent the instructions to the user via email. On the phone itself, the user can then open the email and click the link to install the app. Once installed, you simply need to open it and either scan the QR code or enter the server details manually to connect it. Finally, on iOS devices specifically, the user is prompted to install the management profile and confirm they trust the source. After that, the device will sync with Sophos Central and will be managed from there going forward. You have the option to apply two types of configuration in mobile control. You can install and apply profiles onto a device which can contain a variety of settings from password policies to generic restrictions such as enabling or disabling the use of the camera. You can also configure policies which are applied to other Sophos apps such as secure email and mobile security. At the moment on this device, the downloading and installing of apps is permitted. So to demonstrate, I'm going to go into the profile and untick the allow app installation option. As you can see, after saving the profile and reapplying it, the App Store has been removed from the device altogether. Another feature of mobile control is compliance, where you can set rules on whether you want to allow, block or enforce certain features on a device. Within each compliance rule, you can define rules for one or more mobile platforms. For example, you could have a rule specifically for iOS devices or a combined rule for Android and Windows devices. If a compliance rule is violated, you can then choose how you want to take action by transferring a specific task bundle. In this example iOS policy, I have specified that anything in the app group social media apps is forbidden, which contains Facebook and Twitter. If I then click check now, it will begin checking for any policy violations. As you can see, I have downloaded the Facebook app onto this device and as a result, I have now received a notification to let me know that the device is no longer complying with company policy. Drilling down further into the notification, I can see that to fix it, I need to uninstall Facebook, and after doing so, the device is once again compliant. Alternatively, I could have set up a task bundle that will automatically uninstall the social media apps.